Let's continue our discussion about shutter speed in this week's episode, talking about a specific kind of shutter, the focal plane shutter. Hey fellow photographers, what did you shoot today? So the focal plane shutter, right? We talked about shutter speed. It's something that opens up, lets light into the camera, but how does it work? Now there are different types of shutters and today we're gonna to go over the focal plane shutter. So here I have this red square and this is gonna be our camera sensor or our film or, or, or whatever is the photosensitive or light capturing part of the camera. Now a focal plane shutter is something that sits as the name suggests, within the focal plane, or, or in this case, right in front of the focal plane. So the shutter would sit right in front of here and it's gonna open and close in, in, in a different way depending on the design of the camera to let light hit this surface. Okay, so we have our sensor or film plane here and right in front of that is the shutter and it's gonna be represented by these cards. Now these cards, there are gonna be two of them and these are gonna be the curtains of our shutter. And you'll see why there are two in a minute. So the more efficient is designs use two, because what will happen is it'll be something like this, right? In the horizontal plane, and this is our focal shutter. We have curtain number one and curtain number two. So when we want to expose the film, what happens first is curtain number one will open. And then after the exposure time, the shutter speed has elapsed, curtain two will close. And then the shutter is cocked either automatically or manually and this will revert back to its original position. So this goes in the horizontal direction, right? So again, curtain number one, open, make the exposure after a certain amount of time, and then close the second curtain. Now, why do we have two? Well, this has a couple of advantages. If you notice, while this is opening, do you see how the left side of this film plane is being exposed first? And then we close this, that gets cut off first, that way we can allow even exposure across the entire film plane. Because think about if you just had one, right? So if you just had one like this and let's say it opened and then it went back or something like that, right? So if it opens, the timer starts now, right? And let's say one second, two second, three second, and then this starts coming back. Well, by the time this has gotten all the way closed, this is more than three seconds or whatever the shutter speed was supposed to be. So this part of the image would be exposed longer than this part of the image if the curtain was moving this way. Now this wasn't a huge problem and early shutters just had one curtain and they would drop down like a guillotine or you know, there would be different variations of a single curtain shutter because exposure times were very long, you know, tens of seconds and that fraction of a second wasn't gonna make a difference. But when we get high speed photography going on, that fraction of a second really makes a difference. So that's why we have one open and then the other one closes in the opposite direction and then it resets. Now, this seems kind of bulky, right? These cards are big, you know, they have to cover the entire film plane and that's a lot of movement. So the, the camera would have to be very wide this way in order to accommodate a shutter like this. Well, what they did was they started making horizontal shutters like this, same principle, down and then down and then reset but these curtains would now be made of foldable blades. So it would be like blinds, like on your window, you know, it, and they would, they would collapse, and then the second one would collapse again. So we're gonna see an example of that, and I'm gonna show you in a minute. But, so we started switching to horizontal, uh, sorry, vertical uh, shutters like this from the horizontal, but it's the same concept. Now, why would you use a focal plane shutter? Why, what are some of its advantages? Well, the idea that the focal plane shutter sits near the focal plane inside the camera, so you know, it sits in this area, means that it's pretty much integral to the camera, which because it's built into the camera, you can have lenses that don't have to have shutters built into them, which means that interchangeable lens systems now become much more simple and they don't have to spend as much development and research and uh, materials incorporating a shutter into the lens like you would a leaf shutter, which we're gonna talk about in another episode. So that's one advantage. The other advantage is the speeds are extremely fast. So I think the, the highest mechanical shutters can actually go to one sixteen thousandth of a second. Um, some of the, yeah, and they're, they're very fast. And most modern DSLRs go up to one eight thousandth of a second. And why are they so fast? Well, I've kind of been showing you this, this, this method where this drops and then this drops again. And that's actually for slower shutter speeds. Everything from about, uh, one two fiftieth of a second 
and slower. What happens is the advantage of this with a two curtain system is that for very fast shutter speeds, what can happen is, let's say we're going one one thousandth of a second. What can happen is as soon as this starts dropping, this can follow and it shortens the entire time. So we, instead of fully open and then fully closed, as soon as this drops, we start dropping this other one so that the total exposure is going to be that very fast one one thousandth of a second or one two thousandths of a second. Now, that introduces a drawback to the focal plane shutter. The trade-off, you get very fast shutter speeds, very reliable shutter speeds, but the problem is when you go with those high shutter speeds, what, look at what happens. Because, just kind of like how we had the one before, we're gonna get uneven exposure. We're not gonna get uneven exposure this time because there are two curtains, right? So what's happening is that the total exposure per unit area is going to be the same. However, if we drop this and then start dropping this, do you notice how at the beginning, this part is exposed and it kind of rolls down? This is what we call the rolling shutter problem. So with rolling shutter, we're all getting the same exposure from you know, it's gonna drop and this other one's gonna drop. So overall, each, each segment is gonna get the same amount of exposure because we have two curtains. However, this part of the film plane is going to be exposed first. And as time goes on, we're gonna expose downward. So if you see this in, in uh, if you have a very fast shutter speed and you see things not quite line up, or you see like if you're taking a picture outside of a, of a moving car, and you see that the, the trees or telephone poles are not perfectly vertical, they're slanted. It's because part of the image is actually being exposed earlier in time, fractions of a second earlier in time than the top of, uh, than the, than the, top of the image. And we have to remember from our lenses, right? Everything's inverted, right? So if your shutter is going down, which it usually does, so if it's going down, then the top of the sensor, the bottom of your image is being exposed first and the top of the image, which is the bottom of the sensor, is being exposed last. So that's why you see, you know, trees, depending on which direction you're moving, but basically the base is going to be here and it's going to be tilting in one way or the other, depending on which way you're moving. But the sort of the top of the picture, the bottom of the film plane, is going to be a fraction of a second later in time captured um, than, than the other part of the picture. And that can be a problem for some high speed photography. And we're going to go over that in a future video. But this gives you a good idea of why a focal plane shutter can be advantageous is because of those fast shutter speeds. Because we have two curtains, one drops and the other, and the other drops, so we can, you know, we can drop both almost at the same time, just a slight delay in order to get those super fast shutter speeds by just exposing this. But again, it comes with drawbacks, rolling shutter and flash sync problems, which we're going to talk about when we talk about flash. So. I said that focal plane shutters are sort of integrated into the body of the camera. So in order to show you one, we're gonna have to get a little, uh, yeah, we're gonna have to do some surgery. All right, so like I said, the focal plane shutters are integrated into the camera. So to get a better look, we're gonna have to do some slight modifications here. Here we go. There it is. There is the shutter to this camera. These mechanical shutters are, are a work of art. I mean, this is like as complicated as, as a watch design. It's, it's basically clockwork, right? Because every one of these gears and all these different settings is designed to give a precise and different shutter speed using different delays and, and different gear ratios. So this here happens to be the shutter speed selection dial. And I wrote a number one on here because this is going to be the first curtain. So let's see if I activate this shutter, let's see if you can see the blades move. Did you catch it? So very, very fast. And that was an example of where the blades were going, you know, as soon as one started dropping, the other one started dropping. So I labeled this too, because this is the second curtain. And you can see, I can kind of push this up a little bit it wants to cooperate. And you see how the blades are actually folding? See that two is getting chopped off? 
because the blades are actually made up of these little individual panels, right? So that it can conserve more space instead of having to have one entire curtain here and then another entire curtain fall below. What happens is that these curtains actually collapse kind of like blinds in your window. So there, you know, the film would be exposed. Second curtain drops. And let's see if I can use this. So I'm gonna have to reset the shutter. Now normally you would do this when you, and this is a manual old film camera, so you'd cock the shutter or use the shutter advance button. But now I'm gonna have to use, let's see if I can get this to work. If I can kind of trick the camera into thinking that it's being cocked. And I kind of wanna see if I can, I'll do it this way maybe. If I can get it in, yeah, almost. Yeah, maybe I took the hammer a little too hard. But if I can pull this back, you see that, how they're resetting? So the second shutter is moving up, and the first one is taking its place. And there we go, locked in place again, ready to shoot again. So that was after we recocked the shutter mechanism. We're back to curtain one. This curtain's going to drop, while the other one will also follow it. So let's see if I, that was a pretty fast shutter speed and I don't know exactly what these are, but if I turn this, let's see what the shutter speed is. Also pretty fast. So let me find one that's not as fast so you get a better idea. Okay, we're back and I found a shutter speed that's a little slower so you can actually get a better idea of what's going on. Of course the shutter blades are gonna move pretty fast and you won't be able to see them, but what's gonna happen is that the first curtain is going to drop the shutter will remain open for a period of time and then the second curtain drops. So if we activate this and you can kind of hear a delay there where something is going on in the background where it's, it's, it's preventing the sh second shutter from closing. But that was, you know, I don't know what that was, a quarter of a second, maybe half a second. And you saw the first one drop and then the second one follows after the amount of time that you've selected. So this is how a focal plane shutter works. And you know, the innovations in this design have been the materials used here it has to be strong, durable, but still very lightweight so that it can move, be moved very quickly with not a whole lot of effort. And, you know, all, the, all of this stuff has to be very precisely machined and, you know, the tolerances have to be within certain specifications in order to make sure that the shutter speeds are accurate. So most, I would say, amateur shutters uh, in terms of Mechanical shutters for modern DSLRs are probably rated at around maybe 50,000 shutter actuations with the sort of the pro bodies, their shutters are a little stronger and they're usually rated about 150,000 actuations. So when people say, you know, digital cameras, you can just buy one and shoot as many pictures as you want, you know, these are mechanical parts of the camera that are prone to failure after a lot of wear and tear. So. There are, there are internal components that, that will give out and the shutter speeds won't be as accurate after a certain number of time. But most of them are, are rated at least 50,000, if not the pro body's 150,000 actuations. So I hope that was an informative look at focal plane shutters and how they work, some of their pros, some of their cons. And again, shutter speed is all about letting light into the camera and there are different ways to do that. So today we talked about focal plane shutters. In a future video, we're gonna talk about leaf shutters and then we're gonna talk about the uh, you know, latest and greatest electronic shutters. And there's actually two different types of electronic shutters as well. Some that have the sort of rolling shutter problem and some that don't. So we're gonna, you know, there's lots to talk about when it comes to shutter speed and innovations. But the name of the game is that we're letting light into the camera for a specific amount of time in order to control our exposure. So it's part of the exposure triangle. We had aperture, now we have shutter speed, and then we're gonna have the third part of the exposure triangle. So that's kind of the roadmap for where we're going. So if you like these videos, don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date. And as always, happy shooting.